Welcome to the Dental Capsule. In this series, we'll cover different dental topics and real clinical situations in short, easy-to-follow capsules, designed to help us improve how we manage our daily cases. In this capsule, we are going to talk about the diabetic patient. Diabetes mellitus mainly has two large subgroups. Type 1, which is an autoimmune disease that mainly occurs in young age due to destruction of insulin-secreting cells and requires insulin injections as a treatment for the lack of produced insulin. Type 2, which mainly develops in old age due to insulin resistance and may be managed by other oral medications like biguanides and sulfonylurea. The most common characteristic symptoms of diabetes mellitus are polyuria, which is the increased need for urination, in addition to polydipsia, which is the increased need for drinking water. Diabetic patients also exhibit general weakness and loss of body weight. They may also feel numbness and tingling in the extremities due to peripheral neuropathy. Also diabetic patients always suffer from delayed wound healing due to microvascular involvement. Regarding the oral manifestations of diabetic patients, especially controlled patients, there may not be any special oral manifestations other than increased susceptibility to periodontal infections. In uncontrolled diabetic patients, you may notice severe gingival recession and thus mobility of the involved teeth, all because of the progression of periodontal disease. So we may ask ourselves, is there any special consideration while treating diabetic patients? Generally, if the diabetic condition of the patient is controlled, which means below 7% on the glycated hemoglobin test, HbA1c, you can treat him as a normal patient for most dental procedures. Diabetic patients can undergo extraction and oral surgeries if the percentage of glycated hemoglobin is below 7-8% to in most references. Patients with a percentage higher than 8% may suffer from delayed wound healing and postoperative infections. In patients with more than 10%, extraction should be postponed until better glycemic control is achieved. In terms of random blood glucose, extraction can be done up to 200 mg per deciliter for elective extraction and 240 mg per deciliter for emergency extraction. For safe dental treatment and extraction, it is preferred to provide the patient with early appointments and use the most atraumatic techniques to prevent delayed healing. You should also follow a stress reduction protocol to allow for better glycemic control and prevent abrupt changes induced by stress hormones. Most importantly, the patient should have eaten his meals on time and taken his medication to avoid hypo or hyperglycemia. But take care. The diabetic patient may start to lose consciousness and exhibit what is called diabetic coma, either due to low blood glucose level or due to high glucose level. So how could I differentiate between them? Hypoglycemic coma, which is the more dangerous one as the very low level of glucose in the blood may cause permanent damage to many organs. It is caused by excess insulin in comparison to the food taken. It occurs rapidly compared to hypoglycemic coma. The patient looks sweaty with shallow breathing and a rapid, bounding pulse. Hyperglycemic coma is considered less dangerous as it develops more slowly and is easily identified by the characteristic acetone breath odor in the mouth due to ketoacidosis. The patient's skin is dry, pulse is shallow, and the patient exhibits air hunger. So what shall you do? If the patient is still conscious, try to determine the type of coma by the symptom and by asking the patient about the time of his last meals and injections. If you can't decide, it is always safer to provide the patient with a small amount of fast-acting glucose as it will save the patient's life if it's hypoglycemic coma. Then ask for help. If the patient loses consciousness completely, ask for help immediately and perform basic life support until then. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share your thoughts or questions in the comments, we'd love to discuss them with you. See you in the next capsule.